Okay, so let's go ahead and make a commit here. And now the last part of this series, I'd like to show you how you can actually deploy your SQL database to a live database in the cloud hosted on Azure, and then actually deploy the application itself to Azure as well. And both of these are actually quite simple to set up and do, so long as you have an Azure account. So let's go ahead and head over and log into our Azure portal. Okay, so here we are. And you can see that I've set up a SQL Server and Database instance in the past here for the demo application, but let's go ahead and set up a brand new one for the application that we've been working on. Okay, so what we're going to do is select SQL Databases from the left side, and we're going to go ahead and add a new one. And then here I'm going to call it lambdaforums.dev and create a new resource group if you don't have an existing one already. And then we're just going to create a blank database. and I'm not going to use SQL Elastic Pool. And if you need to create a new server, you can do that as well. I've already set one up here. And then on the pricing tier, in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and select basic. And we're gonna drop our storage down to 500 megabytes. This is just gonna be kind of a sample demo database. So we'll, we'll select apply, and then we'll pin it to the dashboard and we'll go ahead and create it. So similar to the, the feedback that we got when we were deploying blob storage, we'll get a little bit of feedback here on the dashboard while the SQL database is actually spun up for us. While that's spinning up, go ahead and open up SQL Server Management Studio. And we're gonna right click on lambdaforums.dev or whatever database you're using for the series. And then under tasks, we're gonna select deploy database to Microsoft Azure SQL database. Okay, and then just select next here, and we're gonna use the same database name, except now we're just going to go ahead and connect to our remote server. So if you head back to your dashboard and your SQL database has been deployed, you'll get redirected here to the SQL database panel. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and select the server name, and we're gonna go ahead and copy this. And we're going to go ahead and paste the server name into the server name text box here. And for authentication, we're gonna use SQL Server authentication. And so you're gonna to wanna to set up a, an admin user and a password. And the way this is gonna work is you're gonna have the admin user and then at, and then the name of your resource group here. So if we come back and then we go down to properties here, you should see your server admin login and you're just gonna use the password that you created when you created the server admin login. If you need to reset your server admin password, then select SQL databases from the left, select the database for which um, you just created or that you need to change the password for, and then select your server name, and here you have the ability to reset your password. You'll also see the server admin here as well. So from SQL Server Management Studio, go ahead and use that user admin username at, and then the name of your actual SQL Server instance, and then just type in your password. Okay, and so once you're connected, you can see that it looks like it's gonna create a backup or a backpack file here, and we can just click next. Ah, and if you already have a database with this name on um, the server, then you can specify a second name. So I'll just call this one .prod. And so once it's done, go ahead and verify these specified settings and select finish. You're gonna get a little report here showing you what it's actually doing. It's going to extract the schema and actually validate it and then export the data from your database and then run scripts to actually deploy this schema and fill um, actually fill data in the remote database with the data that we've been working with locally. So this will just take a minute or so. So I'll go ahead and pause the video and I'll pick it back up once this import has completed. Okay, so if everything goes as expected, then you should see this operation complete. And 
um, basically all the tables were processed and all the index were all the indices were re-enabled and the object explorer is refreshed so we can go ahead and hit close and then what we can actually do is from SQL Server Management Studio we have a connection to local DB let's go ahead and make a new connection to our newly deployed SQL database so just go ahead and type your credentials in here as well and we'll connect and so if we expand databases you should see if this is the first database you've deployed you'll see one here but I've deployed a number of different databases for this demo and so you can see the prod database is the one that we just most recently deployed and so we should be able to expand tables here and see all of our tables and we can even query against it remotely okay so there are our posts and this is actually on a remote connection hosted in the cloud so we have a local instance that we could develop against and then we could have an instance that's hosted on Azure here for production environment or our QA environment. And so let's look at how to actually set up our application so that we can configure it to use this production database on Azure when we actually run the application in say like a production mode. Um, so it would be nice to be able to develop against this remote database or against our local database. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to minimize SQL Server Management Studio here, and I'm going to close out of our test project for now. And what we're going to do is in the web project, um, actually we can just search for launch settings.json, which is under properties in our web project. And so you can see this list of profiles that we have here. So these actually correspond to the drop-down menu that we have here when we actually launch our application from within Visual Studio. So what I'm going to do is change these a little bit and I'm just going to rename the top one. We'll get rid of IS Express here and you could, you could leave it in if you like, um, but I'm just going to name it Development and we'll call this one Production. And just to slightly differentiate them, I guess, from and we could also just give it the name of our app if you like. So we've got uh, sort of development launch mode and production launch. And we're going to specify the ASP.NET Core environment here to actually be production. And so now if we select from the drop down menu here, we can see that we can launch in development mode or production mode. And regarding the specific environment, let's go ahead and create a production environment. So if you remember in our appsettings.json file, we have this appsettings.development.json where we have a connection string to our local database. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a new appsettings file. So we can select add, new item and we want to create a new ASP.NET configuration file we're going to use the same format here but rather than development we're going to say production and you'll notice that this gets added directly beneath our appsettings.json file so our development.json file gets our connection string to the local DB and then our production you can see it tells us to, to change me here in terms of the database. So we're gonna actually drop in the connection to our remote database here. So to get that, we'll head back into Azure. And this is our SQL Server panel. So let's head back into SQL Databases and go ahead and select the database that you just created. And then we're gonna select Show Database Connection Strings. And you'll see they give you a place to actually put in your username and your password. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna keep it simple for the purposes of this demo and just go ahead and paste this in here. And then go ahead and place your username and your password in place of these placeholders here. Just be very careful that if you're going to hard code your password into the connection string, which is not recommended anyway, then just absolutely don't check in your configuration files into source control. So what I would actually recommend here is to use like some environment variables and then you can actually store those environment variables on whatever system 
is running your application and that way you don't have to worry about having these out in the open and actually part of your application. Okay, so once you've done that, go ahead and save this file. And something else you might consider doing in the long run is moving your storage settings.json file or the connection string to your Azure account into your production app settings.json file and then maybe have like local file storage in your development app settings. Likewise, we could configure different things um, with logging as well here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start this application in production mode. And one thing you might notice, and this confused me at first as well, is now all of a sudden it looks like our CSS is not being loaded. And so what's happening here is actually in our layout file. So if we come over into our views and then take a look at layout.cshtml, we can see this environment include development our site.css file. And so if we do indeed want to use the site.css file that we've been working with in development here, we can simply comma production here. And then if we refresh the page, you can see that we get our, our CSS file back here. And if you, and now you can see that we've refreshed the page, we're actually loading that site.css file here in our quote unquote production mode. And one of the reasons for this is I think that this site.css file is a fairly weak point of this application, um, if I'm being honest. And I think that we could go through and really streamline the CSS, maybe improve the styling of the application in general, and then break out the style sheets into uh, you know separate areas that are used for the different regions of our application. So for now, I'm just going to continue using the site.css file that we have um, that would change in the very near future if I were to continue working on this project um, in our production environment. And there are other kind of clever things that we could probably do here, like when we actually build our application to minify the CSS in JavaScript and then have a special tag here where we'd say like environment include production and then link to our minified style sheet here somewhere wherever that might exist but for now I'm just going to go ahead and include the non-minified site.css in our production although as I mentioned this is not something you'd want to do long term anyway okay so let's go ahead and head back to our site now and try to sign in so we're able to sign in and let's go ahead and make a post. So we'll head to our forums. And so we've got a few different forums here. And so let's go ahead and make a post in the JavaScript forum. Okay, so we'll write some post content here and we'll submit the post. And so we have this new JavaScript post and it's posted by the forum admin user. And so let's head back over into SQL Server and we'll write a query against our remote database here and we can select star from posts. And so you can see now that we have this new post that was just posted in our JavaScript forum with a title um, using TypeScript in React. So that's what I just created here. So that's pretty cool. We are now, uh, we've now kind of confirmed that we are um, working in our application, running it against a remote SQL database hosted on Azure. Let's go ahead and create a forum so we'll create a new one. And I just realized we didn't style our create forum page, but I'll leave that up to you to um, go ahead and finish the styling on this page. And let's make a Ruby forum. So we'll go ahead and create our Ruby forum. We'll upload an image for it as well. And I have some stock images here that I created. So we'll use the Ruby icon and go ahead and create this. And so there's our new forum. And we can go ahead and create a post here as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and submit. And so we have our first post in the Ruby forum. And now, in fact, if we search from forums, we can see our new Ruby forum here. So 
that's pretty cool. We can also see that since we added our blob storage, we are getting remote results for our image URL on each of the on each of these two forums. Something that I also might recommend doing is to create like an edit form page where you just take one of your forum objects and then pass it down into a sort of view model um, with properties on it in input fields. Then you could go ahead and update those um, similar to our user profile. And that way you could actually change your image from the local images that are on some of these forums and host it remotely.